Today I'm going to talk about styled components, styling React components with components, and in the process we're going to talk a little bit about ES6 tag template literals because they have made styled components possible. So specifically we're going to talk about why do we need styled components, how are styled components possible, what are styled components, and how can we best utilize styled components. So I love components. We all love components. I've gone from physical architecture and breaking structure down into buildable components and identifying nodal points in physical space to now working in software development with React components to break down complex user interfaces and their relationship to DOM nodes. And I find this to be really fascinating because obviously we're living in the component age, right? The world is getting so complex that we have to break it down into tiny reusable pieces so that that complexity becomes manageable and scalable. So this is a quote by one of the guys who wrote Styled Components, Max Stoiber. He says, we are no longer structuring documents, we are structuring everything in tiny reusable pieces. And that started when we got really into JavaScript. So does full stack JavaScript have complete synergy? And it does in so many ways with the back end and the front end now with React and Redux, but there always seems to be this weak link when it comes to styling. And you start to question, why aren't we styling directly in JavaScript? So nobody likes CSS, right? There are many CSS methodologies attempting to integrate it with React by using component specific styles and single use class names. This is just one example of a methodology where each component, each React component at the top here, has a mirrored CSS file to handle its styling. And what you start to question is, if the styling is that specific and a class name is only used once, why do we need classes at all? And the back end, I'm sorry, the front end designers are saying the same thing, right? You know, just because we were introduced to the web space, um, as a page because it was the easiest way to transition from print media to the web, you know, now that those designers kind of want to blow that apart and they're saying, we're not designing pages, we want to design systems of components. So why do we need style components? To style React components directly in JavaScript and so that that styling becomes a React component itself. So Style Components, it's a library written by Max Stoiber and Glenn Mattern, and it utilizes tag template literals to remove the mapping between components and styles, allowing you to attach styles directly to a React component. So this is an example of Style Components on the right here. So first we import Styled from Styled Components, and then we create React Components here with wrapper and title. So you notice the capital letter. And const title equals style.h1 is a function that when called returns a React component that renders an h1 tag to the DOM. So these are React components. And then we use the backtick notation to pass in styling. And I'll come back to the backticks in a few minutes. But essentially, the backticks call a function just like parentheses. So here we are simply passing in a string of CSS as an argument. And the styling will be applied to the rendered section in h1 tags. So here at the bottom, we can see that they're used just like any other React component. Um, app, the component app is going to render a wrapper and a title component. And what, that happen, what happens in the browser is this, just what you would expect, right? We get a rendered yellow section and a centered H1 tag of text. So what are tag template literals? So let's look at how style components utilizes them. So the backtick notation calls a function, but how it handles arguments is a bit different, specifically in how it deals with interpolations. So if we look at the console log examples here on the right, if we log I love favorite dog using an or, yeah, I'm sorry, using an interpolation with parentheses, then it will simply print the string I love Keffa. But if we log it using only backticks, then things start to get a little strange. So what happens is it places what happens, what comes before and after the interpolation into an array as the first argument, which you see here, I love, and then the period are strings placed into that array. And then the second argument becomes the value of the interpolation itself. And the coolest part is if that interpolation is a function, it actually executes that function and returns its value. 
So this allowed props to be handled and actually allowed the library of style components to be written. So as an example here at the bottom, we're using a primary prop and it will evaluate if it has it or not. So if it has the primary prop, the font size will be 2EM. If it doesn't, it will be 1EM. So how are style components possible with tag template literals? So again, style components pass on their props to the mounted DOM node, just like any other React element. So we use interpolations to adjust styling based on props. As another example, here we have two CSS properties being set with the primary props, one for background color and the other for the text color. So inside the wrapper component, just like before, we will render a normal button and a primary button. And what happens is this, right? Super easy. What about its use with third party components like React Router? Well, as long as they use the class name prop, style components will work with it. And in addition, it will work with React Native and the style prop. So as an example with React Router shown here, we create a, a styled link component. You know, at the top, we're just creating what would be a regular React Router link. And then we're styling it with styled, you know, styled link is created as a styled component. And we can look at that in the wrapper component and render it as an unstyled link and then a styled link. And what happens is this. Super easy. So we can extend styles too for single use cases if we don't want to deal with props. So we can simply call extend on the style component if we just want to change its styling for one particular use case. You can also use the with component um, uh, text if you want to change the tag a style component renders. So for instance, we could change a button to be an A tag, which will then just reuse the button styles. So here I'm showing an example of extending a basic button. So it will become a red button. And what it renders like in the browser is this. So what are styled components? They are fully styled React components. And the coolest part is that style components handles theming. So we use the theme provider wrapper that's built in to create a theme for all React components that are nested inside it. So first, as an example, at the top here, we import theme provider from style of components. And then we define our theme properties. You know, here they can be anything, but here we're just setting an overall main color to be red. And then we use those properties to set our props. So here we are setting the color, the text color and the border color to be that main property of red. And then finally, we use our theme in the theme provider wrapper with a nested button inside it. And therefore, the button will inherit the theme styles. And what we'll render in the browser is this. So I'll conclude with a final thought about a possible best practice for working with styled components. So it has been pointed out to us to split up React components into containers to handle state or how things work and components to handle presentation or how things look. And so this is a great way to think about implementing style components because you can basically wrap everything up in a theme to pass down styling from the highest level. And you really wanna break your components down into style components, the very smallest elements like a button. So how can we best utilize style components? Exactly what I just said. You just break it down into its smallest component, those style components and wrap it all up in the theme provider. So definitely visit stylecomponents.com. Thank you.